Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 271. I am your host, Keith Andrew. Along here is the talented and beautiful Ms. Bishop, Ms. Vianne Bishop. And I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show once again. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Now, for people who want to know a little bit about you, you said you're a chocolate lover, you're an actress, yes. and also you're a gymnast. That's right. <laughs> And for people who want to watch episode part one, the link will also be in the description box. We did an interview about three years ago. Actually, two and a half, almost three. It's yeah. uh, 2014. And you know, my video quality came a long way from recording from the phone, recording from the computer screen. Now I have Skype recorder, so it's going to be cut in half. I'm going to be on the right, you're going to be on the left. Excellent. That's fabulous to hear. So you've seen how the quality changed. So yes. basically for this interview, we're just going to catch up for the two years and a half. Right, and we're going to do all that catch up in a half hour. You're going to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> so starting off, what have you been up to? Um, well, I was in New York the last time that you interviewed me, and um, now I've made the transition to L.A., so that's definitely a big change. Um, I came out to L.A. probably just a, a few months, actually, after our last interview. So I've been uh, working out here as an actress and writer and producer. I um, actually just co-directed the first thing ever for me, so that's exciting. So I have my directorial debut coming up, which is really exciting. Um, but I'm really enjoying being on the West Coast, so it's um, life is good. Oh, absolutely. You know, mm. was there anything you want to talk about, or do you want me to just use my do my usual routine? <laughs> what, whatever you want. I mean, I um, I would love people to know about some of my recent films. I have a, a film called Reservations for Three that's been playing the festival circuit for the last year. I think it's got into maybe um, eighteen or nineteen festivals so far, and it's won a bunch of awards. And uh, the reason I love it so much is because it's a film that I, I co-wrote and co-produced and star in. So that's exciting to be involved in all of those areas. And then we recently shot a follow-up piece to it that's called um, Candace and Peter's Smoking Hot Date. So you have, hello there. <laughs> you have to be on the lookout for something called Candace and Peter's Smoking Hot Date. Because I co-directed that one, co-wrote it, and I star in it. Oh, that's really cool. I would like to know what you've been doing for the three years. So you mentioned that, yes, the last time we did talk, you are in from New York. Yeah. And I thought you were going in between New York and L.A., but I guess you're officially I, I, out there. Yeah, I was going back and forth until I finally made my decision, and now I'm here. How you like it out there? How did you get I, used to the earthquakes? Yeah, no, I love it. I mean, I... Uh, I'm from the East Coast in Canada. I'm from Nova Scotia, so I'm, I'm used to being around a lot of nature and, uh, you know, hiking and beaches. So I, I feel very at home out here. What part of California are you on? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of on the, the west side of Los Angeles. So uh, I, uh, like I'm right in the center of everything. It's not so bad. How are the earthquakes? Have not experienced any. I mean, every once in a while, I'll wake up to a little shaking, but I mean, nothing is. I, I knock on wood. <laughs> I plan on going to LA at some point. We should definitely hang out. And if you're ever in New York, we should definitely hang out. But exactly. one thing I do want to bring up is, um, and if I talk a lot, I apologize. <laughs> I like I like hearing you. First thing I do want to bring up is, are you still part, or, or did you join the Hoboken Film Festival? Um, no, I have not done the Hoboken Film Festival. You should. It's a lot of people I interviewed are really joining it, and are they getting their films out there. And you're well, a beautiful yeah, woman. We've been in a lot of different, we were in the Manhattan Film Festival in New York, so I'll definitely check into it. What can you tell us about the Manhattan films and how many on the subject? Like how many film festivals overall have you been a part of and how many films were you a part of? Oh my goodness, I don't even know how many films. I've probably been in, uh, I don't know, 20 or 30, I well, don't know, probably more than that. I don't know, like 40 films maybe. Um, 
I don't even know how many film festivals, probably 50, 60. Um, so it's, it's been a really good run. Yeah, I love the whole experience. You get to meet lots of other filmmakers, and it's a way that you get to, you know, get your work out there and get it seen. And from the film festival circuit, one of our shorts we're pitching as a TV series because it gets so much traction, is doing so well. So you never know what's going to happen. You just need to keep putting that energy out there and, and keep on doing. No, absolutely. Now I'm going to pass the show over to you. Was there anything you wanted to ask me? Like I said, this is your time after all, so I try to make all interviews different as possible. Sure. Um, I mean, what do you generally ask? What do you want to know about me? That's what I'm putting it back in your court. <laughs> well, for people who haven't seen the first one, you know, but I can ask you the same questions. You know, basically, it's better video quality. But, yeah. you know, from the first time I asked you, you told us about your gymnast background. Do you mm -hmm. still do stuff in that area, or is it past yeah. tense? I, no, 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 I still do it. I um, I probably go once a week to it's a place called LA School of Gymnastics, and I just go and work out and work on my tumbling there. And, and as an actor, it's good to keep up with those skills, so I try to keep up on it as much as, as much as I can. I try to go once a week, but, you know, freelancing, my schedule is always changing, so if I have deliverables for my films or if I have auditions, I'm not always able to, to make it, so I... I try to do it as much as possible, though. No, absolutely. Now, the next question I was going to ask you, I don't remember if I asked you the first time, but have you ever had an article written about you, or were you ever in a magazine or any magazines? Yeah, I've had a lot, especially if I had a lot of press with the film festivals. Um, so there, there, I've been in numerous newspapers and, and magazines and uh, TV promos and things like that. The one thing I do want to point out, and if you've noticed when I first started, I re <laughs> most of the way, I used to be called uncensored. Make a long uh -huh. story short, so when I got started, you know, it sounded like a cool name, but you know, basically some actress took the idea and the name, and I said, you know what, long story short, I want something to let you know. Well, I had the Key Fancy Network brand, I might as well do something with it. Yeah, that makes sense. So I took everything down. Basically, to sum up the three years, two and a half, as I say three years, making it, it sounds nicer, mm -hmm. is basically a lot of people said to me, you're not copyrighted, you're not trademarked, you're not this, you're not that. And it's basically, you know, I went to a senior warrior slash advisor. I took everything down. I came up with a permission slip. It uh -huh. says, basically, I introduce myself, and it's just, I introduce myself, I tell you what the show's about, and you're signing it saying, you support the talk show, and you're wanting me interview you. Right. I should have been doing it from the start, but my mistake was, I was taking people at the word, so, you know, it's kind of like... You know, that was stupid on my part because people can just say, yeah, yeah, you know, I changed my mind. But I got people that said to me, yeah, and this is how they talk. Yeah, you know, my agent said or my publicist said, we saw the um, video quality we you did or we did and we don't like it. Can you take it down? You're hurting my image uh, or we're going to sue you. And it's kind of like... You know, I don't put words in your mouth. If you say, if you said something stupid, you say, can you please edit it? Okay, sure, no problem. I would take it down and re-edit it. I'm not saying you say stuff, stuff, stuff. I say stupid things. But I'm not yeah. saying... Well, we're all human, right? No, absolutely. So I'm not saying if you said something or I said something about was stupid, you can say, hey, can you please edit it? That's it. You don't have to come at me. It's like, yo, come at me, bro. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, you don't have to come at me and say, make idle threats and make it, because you, you come off like an asshole then. Right. And it's kind of like, yeah. a, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's just say no one wants that, so. No, absolutely. And it's kind of like, you know, why did I do all that hard work if they're going just to throw it back at me? It's kind of wasting my time and everything. I so, totally understand. That makes a lot of sense. Now, what's that being said? Chicago's name. 
Oh, that's a dog. What, what? Oh, you said my cat. This is actually my dog. Yeah, no, I said, what's your dog's name? Oh, I didn't hear you. It's, uh, her <laughs> name is La Fifi. Hello, La Fifi. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> She's just shy, very sketchy. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so, the next thing I was going to ask you is, what were the steps, and going back to our first interview, what were the steps you had to take to get where, where you are? For example, I use Facebook, LinkedIn, Stage 32 to find all my guests and everyone. Mm -hmm. For you to start your career, what did you do? Did you do the similar parts or did you, was there other websites you could recommend? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not one thing in particular. I mean, I think for an actor, the most important thing is a lot of training. Um, you constantly keep training because if you're not good at what you do, then it doesn't matter how many websites you're on or how many, you know, so you have to learn it all. Um, you know, that's why I went to school in New York. And then I, I constantly do ongoing training. But, you know, there's, you know, there's standard like Actors Access and L.A. Casting and, and, you know, there's just so many different sites for actors now to submit themselves. And, and most people, like, you know, I, I still do submit myself for certain projects, but usually it's my agent or manager that's taking care of that for me. Um, but, you know, I try to use Facebook and Twitter and, and LinkedIn and all that stuff because you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> no, absolutely. And now you're a perfect candidate for this. Does your social media following impact your career number one and does it also dictate if you should be seen or have this part well i think it definitely i mean it can't hurt right but i think it depends on the type of i mean if you were going out for a reality show then the more of a following you have um the better i mean and the more of a following it, it's never going to hurt you but I would say the majority of auditions, they're not like checking your stats to make sure you have this many followers or that sometimes, but not always, you know, so I try to do it as much as I can, but, um, it's also a balancing act. Like if I spend all my time on social media, then I don't have time to get my writing done and my next film completed and, um, and all the producing I do as well. So it's, uh, ha, huh, I just need 50 more hours in every day and then I'd have it all done. <laughs> I hear it. <laughs> what about, I don't remember the first one that much, but did, did he ever work in retail? No, I have never worked in retail. Uh, I oh. guess you were spared. I guess. I mean, I've, I've worked in the hospitality industry, I've worked in hotels, I've worked in restaurants, but never retail that I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, the most uh, recent job I worked at asked me about, do I use social media you know, I was kind of like, e no, but <laughs> it's like, maybe, <laughs> like, why, why does that have to, have anything to do with it? So, yeah, it came out later on. I said no, but then I said yes, and it's like, oh, if I have a choice to work here or do my talk show, sorry, my talk show wins, because this right. is what right. I want to do for the rest of my life, not... Put a face on and say, have a nice day, or eat us save 50 cents. <laughs> but, uh, mm -hmm. let's see, I'm trying to make it as different as the first time. Oh. Well, do, is there anything you want to ask me? Ask, gloves off. Ask me the most personal questions you want. I have nothing to hide. You push towards me, I push back. Let's make it more interesting, more fun. Well, what's your favorite kind of food? You know I love chocolate. Um, I would say there's a lot, but if I had to pick one, it would have to be Moss Mouse. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Is there any food you don't like? Um, lettuce. I can't, I, there's something about lettuce I, I just can't stand. I love lettuce. I probably eat it every day. Well, cold lettuce or warm lettuce? Cold. I uh, everything when it's it has to be hot for me really? to eat it. <laughs> I don't know. It makes it more better. I guess it makes it more tolerable. Okay. I, I give you a perfect example. Uh, where did I go recently? Oh, we went to Panero, uh, and I don't know if there's a Panero in LA. Yes, there is. Yeah. I got the steak and cheese, 
and it had onions, it had um, tomatoes and lettuce, and usually I take the lettuce off. And I was like, one day, ah, screw it. Let me just try it. So I, was, I was forcing it down. It's like, I'm trying to like a lettuce, but it's not working. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> but, you know, anything that's, it has to be warm. You know, tomatoes have to be warm. Onions have to be warm. You like them all warm. Okay. If that makes any sense. <laughs> well, it's what, it's what you like. So there you go. So it makes sense for you. That's true. Now, do you still do? Well, that's the next man. That's gonna ask you. Oh, you mentioned your writing. What was one of your scripts that you mentioned? It did turn into a short series, but that's the first question. But uh, one of one, uh, I can't even, I can't even talk. Uh, one of your series, but you really like, but they pulled a plug. So the, two questions in one. First one is, what is the series that you wrote? that they liked, but at the same time, the series that you were a part of, they just said it, we can't do anything. They just pulled a plug. Well, so the, the short film that I was talking about, it's called Reservations for Three. That's the one that we're pitching in the TV series right now. And it's not on the air yet, but we're, we're pitching it. But it's done the short film festival circuit at um, you know close to 20 festivals right now, winning a lot of awards. So then we did the the companion piece called Candace and Peter's Smoking Hot Date that I co-directed. And I'm that's in the post-production phase right now. So that should be out probably in the next month. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about that. And then I have um, an, a feature film that I wrote that I will star in. Um, and I finished another draft of that. That's uh, in early pre-production. And hopefully that will be shot maybe next summer, I'm guessing. Um, but to be honest, I haven't had anything that was about to go and then the plug was pulled. So I, I just haven't had it. There's lots of times that you work on things, like when you're working on your own projects, um, that you just never end up getting the funding. But I've never been in a situation where it was about to shoot and then they pulled the plug. No, oh, absolutely. And you mentioned networks, so like um, Fox, CW, or those networks? Or do you just mean like independent networks, like Sundance? No, I mean, we're, we're pitching to major networks and independent networks. So um, so we'll we'll see. Maybe the next interview you'll find out. Actually, that's a perfect idea for me. Maybe I should start pitching my idea to the independents. Maybe yep. they would be interested. Of course. Why, why not, right? <laughs> you, if you don't put yourself out there, then they can't accept it, right? No, absolutely, and I know this one's not really realistic for me, but I think this one would be perfect for you. What would you say about pitching your idea to Netflix or Hulu? Yeah, no, that's that's all in the plan. Like all, like you know, it, you know, we we research each network and kind of tailoring the pitch to each network. And um, but yeah, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, all of those would be great. No, not to complain to. You. But, you know, I am jealous because you do have a big fan following. And I know a little bit it's my fault because, you know, I kind of rub people the wrong way. You know? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I have my moments. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say that do you think eventually, if you know, if you look for something, it's going to be thrown back. Do you think, like for me and for you, if you just wait, and continue doing what you're doing, or for anyone out there that's doing what you're doing, eventually it's going to work out? Or do you I think, think I think so. I truly believe that. If you keep working hard, I mean, not just keep, you know, you got to sometimes think about, okay, with well, maybe that not working, maybe I need to try a new idea. So not always doing the exact same thing, but if you're, you know, if your goal is that you want this talk show on the air, then keep working it, and someday it will be. No, absolutely. Now, let's got to say um, the other part was before I took all my interviews down, I really didn't want to do that because they all got over a hundred. Even you got over a hundred, over hundreds. And so I took them down and I put them back up. And, you know, little by little, you know, it would bounce back. But it's kind of like I don't understand when I first was doing my show. I, it was, you know, it was go. I can't snap my fingers. But, it, you know, it was go. And now I'm doing it. It's kind of like, eh, if you like the person, 
okay, but if you don't like it, it's gonna right. So how that's directed at you is say you posted something online and you got over five hundred, but you took it down. And say, oh, okay, I have to re-edit it. So you post it then, but you only get like twenty people. So do you think? It's the first impression that counts, or do you think it's okay? You took it down for a reason, so why should we watch it again? I think probably people just wouldn't bother rewatching it again after you put it back up. They're probably like, "Oh, I already saw it," you know. That's just my opinion. No, I agree with you. I could be right. I could be wrong. <laughs> One thing I want to do now is take a quick commercial break. Hold up um, the water bottle, so I know where to edit it. Is the first thing I want to share with you, and you should be honest, you're a perfect candidate for this, is Celebrity, I don't know if you ever heard of it, CelebrityVM.com. And now for CelebrityVM.com, if you're a fan of Breaking Bad, House of Cards, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Wrestling, I'll give you a perfect example. You come across it, and you say, oh, Keith, you're, um, you're asking for $20? Okay. I will pay you the twenty dollars, and in return, I I will say whatever you want, as long as it's not perverted or provocative. But you can say it's my birthday, my husband's getting a congratulations. Can you give him a shout out? My kids like doing impressions. Whatever and everything you want me to say, I can say it for twenty dollars. And there's a one thing I do want to point out: is prices do vary. I'm cheap, so I'm only asking for 20 But you have, and my couple of good friends of mine, Malena Perez, Velvet Sky, they're asking for 25 And basically, there's a whole bunch of actors on there. And it's basically like a community. You basically, you're making money, but you're also interacting with your fans. Right. So that's Celebrity VM. And you should definitely be on there because you are an actress. And... If you have a, you do have a great big following, so it's no reason why your fans want to ask you for it, for endorsements. Plus, you get money on the side. Well, I will definitely look into that. So thank you for letting me know. <laughs> the next thing I want to promote is two things in one. The first one is WooQuates.com. And for people who like WooQuates or collecting shirts, socks, or just getting stuff in the mail... $14 a month, you get a whole bunch of great things. Different themes, there's an anime box where you can just get old anime animation. There's one where it's just shirts, where you get four different shirts. So that's WooQuakes.com, $14 a month. The prices do vary. And the last one is, I don't know if I asked you the last time, uh, do you have a dog? No. Uh, for people who are dog lovers out there, and eventually, hopefully, there's one for cats. But for right now, for the dog lovers out there, it's called BarkBox.com. Uh -huh. Same thing, basically, like WooQuates is, $14 a month. Or maybe it's cheaper, have to look. But it's an online description. You get a toy, treat, an accessory, a whole bunch of great things. Now, going back to the show, like I said, this is a lot different from the first time we met. At least I get to see your beautiful blonde hair, you know, blue, like the first one. <laughs> because the reason it was blue is because I was recording from my phone. Right. And I guess right. it was giving off a tinge to it. So yeah. everyone who I interviewed basically looked like a Smurf. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a transition, you know, from phone, sure. camera, split screen. I'm working on getting my own studio, but so wrapping up our interview, I'm gonna pass it back to you. I know the three things I didn't mention, but we can always pass on that. You know, it's not a big deal. But was there any stories you wanted to share? And when I first approached you, you know, and the hand gesture goes from Bill Rowley, you know, the spin stops here. When yeah. I first met you, and we did our interview about three years ago. What was your honest opinion of me? And three years later, doing a part two, am I the same person, or did you actually see growth? Well, I, I honestly, I thought you had a lot of charisma when I first met you uh, three years ago. 
Um, you know, what I loved about you is you're someone that wants to do what you want and is not going to let anyone stand in the way. And I think that's fabulous. And there needs to be more people out there that, that are that way. Um, so, yeah, kudos to you for that. And, uh, you know, as far as growth over the last three years, I think you're the same person. I would say that you um, perhaps you have a bit more confidence right now. Um, but overall, I think you're the same nice, easygoing guy. No, I appreciate it. Now, stay tuned for after the show. I do have a question or two for you. But okay. wrapping up, I hope you had a good time. I know I asked a lot of stupid questions towards the end, and I apologize. You didn't ask any stupid questions, and yes, I did have a good time. <laughs> well, wrapping up our interview segment, and I just want to say it's a real honor and privilege to have you on the show for a second time. And I'm looking forward to having you on a third time once maybe I would have my own studio by then. Yep, well, fingers crossed. <laughs>